we live. Morning, afternoon, evening, wherever y'all are. Uh, Pastor, <laughs> this is End Time Church. Uh, I'm Christopher Manti. That, that is uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm Jake. Yeah, where did Pastor Anderson go? Uh, He's, he live. jumped the ship. He, he jumped. What's the deal? Uh, abandoned ship. I'm sorry. It's just dramatic it's, entrance, that guy. So, so is anybody here? I hear uh, we, we've lost cell service across the country. Is anybody here? That's a real good question. Yeah, so we've been having denial of service um, attacks by some kind of national nation that doesn't want to reveal themselves. North Korea is making noise. Who knows what's going to happen tonight? But, yes, folks I see are here, so praise the Lord. Uh, welcome, welcome. If you're, as always, just my little blurb, if you're using our fantastic portal called wearetheendtimechurch.com, uh, please make yourself known if you'd like to. Uh, we'd love to know that you are here and say hello, welcome you. We'll give you a nice virtual hug, totally safe from viruses, um, human viruses, I guess. But anyway, just say hi, create a login for yourself. That'd be, that'd be fantastic. No pressure to do so, just saying it's available to you. So go ahead and utilize that. Uh, say hi to your brothers and sisters from around the world that are here. Uh, check out the different buttons there on the site that you can Click on, first of all, our app, totally free. Go grab it. You can give to the ministry right there from the Give button, who we are, what we believe. That's just a click away. Connect with us if you want to, you know, just tell us you're around. And, hey, I'm so-and-so from such and such a place, and I'd like to, you know, keep up with what you guys are doing. Hit the Connect with us button, uh, and you can see previous messages. Anything we've done the past two years, we've been on uh, totally online for two years. You can go see all the messages we've ever done, including all the special guests that we've had on. It's really helpful. Uh, and you can request prayer right here uh, from the site. You can hit the button that says live prayer. Uh, we'll get it right away. Even if you're not watching live, that's all right. That'll still work. We'll get the notification. So please feel free to use any and all of that. And if you're just watching YouTube or Facebook, welcome to you. And we love you too. Just the same in Jesus' name. All right. I'm done for the night. Hey, full house already here in the chat. So uh, not my, not many gathering from chat via their cell phone. So that's good. <laughs> We've got the, the fail proof <laughs> there. So, uh, hey, one of the things that we were talking about, Chris, we talked earlier today is just, uh, across the world is, is there been so many across the United States, across so many different online church movements, which is fabulous, which is great. And you said we've been at it for two years. Uh, but one of the questions that keeps coming up or suggestions that keeps coming up is why are you doing this? What value are you bringing? And I, I think we've been very clear about that. We're not here. We're not gathering here just to, uh, just to teach, just to provide a lesson, to provide a message. Uh, we're gathered here or provide a presentation. We're gathered here to gather. That's, that's the point. And that's what we want to do. Uh, many of you are, are scattered. I mean, we're all scattered around the world and able to connect in this way. And that's a, that's a beautiful thing that we have here. So, and original and, you know, unique. That's really what is unique about what we're doing is that's it. It's the fellowship aspect, the communication aspect, the back and forth, the really being the body type of stuff. Like you said, we can go anywhere for a message. You can go to YouTube all day long, and folks do, uh, and absorb some um, good stuff and some maybe not good stuff, but there's no interaction. There's no fellowship involved. And so we definitely provide that. And that's that's the point of this whole thing. If we, uh, we're not, you know, we're not strapped for things to do, right? We we could definitely be doing other things with our time. Jake is a local church body leader, and he's got a ministry called Stand Firm, and he's got books. He's an author. I mean, he's got stuff to do. Pastor Anderson, he's writing. What? Are, how many books do you have now? You've got two or three. Out. Third. Three. Yeah, that's about to hit the hit the world with number three, the haunting of America, right? That we're yeah. that we're calling it? fantastic. So anyway, we got stuff to do. Okay? We've got work. Uh, this is d purely a calling for the Lord. So anyway, greetings to all y'all. Thank you. Australia checking in. Praise God. Trinidad and Tobago. Is it Tobago or Tobago? I don't know. Sorry. Um, I've never been there. I've been close, but not to not to those islands, sir. My apologies. Uh, but that's awesome. Yes. Yeah, fantastic. we're not jealous that you get to be there at all new not even oh. a little it's not nice to lie uh, that's right probably it's probably pretty nice uh anyway pastor anderson is going to lead us uh, in worship tonight he's also uh moderating our chat room so very talented the lovely and talented uh christopher anderson is oh, with us lovely. he's our loving so bouncer. lovely so lovely oh he'll he'll bounce you all right <laughs> but I did get a haircut today, uh, an authentic, real barbershop haircut today. First time since the pandemic. So no more, well, I used to call them barracks cuts, but no more 
you know, cut my own hair. So it looks yeah. good. I think. It does. Yeah. It, it does. Little fade. I even yeah. up the old facial hair and everything. I mean, I'm feeling like a million it's bucks. Today. Being styled versus being cut, right? Is that the That's true. You got the style. I just got the cut. <laughs> <laughs> now we're getting silly for St. Jacob's style. All right. Praise God. Yeah. Uh, so, so this topic tonight, if you're just joining because of the topic, for, first of all, thank you. Uh, and I know it's a little, in fact, you know, more than one fo- folk <laughs> person has pulled me aside and said, hey, what, are you, what is this about? Um, are we going to be okay here? Uh, yes, yes. The gospel is going to go out. The word of God is going to be preached. We're going to praise God. It's like every other week. Um, so we're looking forward to um, what the Lord's going to have to do with all of us here, which is the awesome part about being here. Anyway, right, now I'm really, really done. Uh, Jake, do you have anything else before we before we kick off with uh, Pastor Chris? Hey, I just want to say thank you, everyone who is here, everyone who's been a part of this. If you're here for the first time, we're so glad that you're here. Uh, please check it out. Please get, get into the chat. And we know that some of you are listening, and you, you may have never got in the chat. We're glad that you're here as well. And, uh, again, what we hope that we can do through this is connect believers just, period, uh, believers that are tracking along uh, matters of the end times. And it's, I don't know, I think both of you guys would agree. Uh, we've been, like I said, been doing this for two years. Our individual ministries focused on preparing people for uh, the the end has been going on much further back, and it is now that folks are asking questions and seeking us out, and and so uh, that I mean that's the hope here is that we have a place that's not again not even only a place that's meeting, but we're also looking at how can we uh, be the church in difficult times. And uh, thank you guys for being a part of that and doing that. And let me pray, and let's get into the time of worship. Again, that's what we have. Rather than just uh, hearing it, I mean, you can hear some great teaching uh, all over YouTube, and you can hear some crazy teaching as well. Uh, but we have the chance to gather, to worship, to share, to encourage one another, and just be interconnected in the moment for uh, the Holy Spirit to intersect us gathered here. So let me pray. Father, I thank you that for End Time Church, I thank you for the opportunity to connect and be together. I thank you for the leadership of uh Pastor Manti, Lord, and Pastor Chris Anderson, and their uh, their heart. Lord, I thank you for all who have uh, lead us in worship. Lord, I thank you for Pastor Anderson doing that tonight. Lord, I pray that you have brought every one of us together, whether we're here right in the moment live or whether we're later, we're all uh, part of this family that are connecting and intersecting what you want to do. And Lord, we want you to move. And Lord, we give you tonight and ask you to move in our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, actually, uh, Pastor Jake, that's a uh, pretty good segue to our first song, Blessed Be Your Name. You know, some of the lyrics in the first verse and the second verse that really stand out is, Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk in the wilderness, blessed be your name. The second verse is, Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. When there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. And we can honestly sit here and say that in the West, we're very blessed we have you know, so much going for us as far as Christianity goes. We're only, I don't even know if we can call this persecution compared to what other people are dealing with, but there's coming a time when here in the West where it's going to get bad too. We know this. And, you know, the what we're doing with Boot Camp Ministries, the Stand Firm Ministries, the Wings of the Eagle, and then here at End Time Church is really helping build the body of Christ into the mindset to stand firm when these things come, you know, to, to train us how to walk in suffering. And this song really puts it into words that we're going to exalt the name of the God, of the Lord God, Jehovah. We're going to bless his name. Even in the midst of our suffering, we're going to bless his name. And so we're going to sing that tonight. And then uh, just, I'm sure you probably know the song. So just sing it where you're at and just think about those words and how we can bless the Lord, even in the midst of our suffering, as much as we do in the midst of our blessings. I'm about to preach. So after all, we're not after the, the blessing is God. We're after the face of God. It's not about the hand of God, but his face. So we're going to worship him tonight. We're going to bless his name tonight. We're going to lift his name up because that's what it's about. Blessed be your name, and that is blessed from the streams of 
of a bonded spoon Blessed be a thief Blessed be a thief Found in the desert place Who will walk through the wilderness Blessed be a thief Every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to pray and when the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name, sun shining down on me. The world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. The road marked with suffering. It's paid in the offering. Blessed be your name. And every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to pray. And when the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away, you give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Yeah. Lord, I hope you will say the same thing. Everyone here, I hope you can say that. That even in the midst of our suffering, your heart will choose to say, blessed be the name of the Lord. See, we can respond in our trials and tribulations in two ways. Three ways. We can either get upset, throw a fit, and throw a tantrum. We can be indifferent, or we can bless the name of the Lord. So may us tonight, we maybe choose to bless the name of the Lord going forward in the midst of our sufferings, in the midst of our trials, whatever it may be, may we bless the name of the living God who we serve. Lift your hands of worship tonight. Years of the glory and the honor Lord, we lift our hands and worship as we lift your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands and worship as we lift your holy name. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do 
miracles so great, there is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. We bless your name tonight, Jesus. We thank you, God, for who you are. Lord, we ask you that you would receive our worship tonight as sweet incense unto you, Father. We bless your holy name, God, for you are the living God. We praise you, God. We love you, God, because you are our way maker, God. Even when there doesn't seem to be one, Lord, you are our way maker. And if we keep our eyes upon you, Jesus, then your word will light our path. We thank you, God. We praise you. Darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. And even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. And even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. And even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. A way you make a Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you Thank you. 
no name given amongst the men by which we must be saved and by the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name tonight. soon returning king god and we sing holy 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 unto your precious sweet name tonight we thank you in jesus mighty name
Pastor Anderson, thank you uh, for taking us to the throne tonight and reminding us just that we can rely on the Lord and rely on him. He's always at work. I want to pray for us and pray for Pastor Manti as he comes on to share. Father, I thank you again that we get to gather and we get to be a part of this. Lord, I thank you for those connected around the world and here tonight live and those checking this out later. Uh, Father, I pray that you just give clarity and let you speak through uh, Chris as he comes up. And Father, we we trust you and love you. And I pray in each of our hearts that uh, you um, just plow up uh, our hearts so that we can receive your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, brother. Thank you, my friend. Both my friends, Chris Anderson, man, he was, he sounded awesome. I don't know if it was these headphones or what. Um, but I'm so thankful for my brothers for helping tonight and all of you for joining. Okay. Let's get right into this. So, uh, if you've run under a rock the past couple of days and weeks, um, there's upheaval in the United States. And there's a people in the world. No shortage of that, it seems. And central to that upheaval um, is a racial component. And I never want to be one that says, well, he was afraid to address this or that. So I'm going to share my screen right now. We'll get to what the Lord has to say on this. All right. All right. You should be able to hear me okay. Somebody give me a thumbs up. Just uh, for confirmation, that would be awesome. By the way, if you're watching on the portal at the wearetheendtimechurch.com and you see in the chat area there are links that will sporadically come up about our app, about giving, about committing your life to Jesus, etc. Please interact with those buttons. They're super cool. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my friends. Okay. Uh, again, I've gotten feedback on this over the past two days from folks I know and folks I don't know um, because it's highly uh, flammable. It's flammable. Um, even the phrase, Black Lives Matter. Obviously, I'm not a black man. Uh, Pastor Jake, Pastor Anderson are not black men. Um, Taryn, who also uh, does our worship leading for us, is not a black woman. Uh, but we do have black folks who are part of this church. And thank God. And as well as my local church. And so uh, that's a little slice of heaven. I think of obviously Revelation 7, etc. cetera, uh, all nations, right? So why do we even have to say this? Um, I'm going to demonstrate why. It's a spiritual warfare tactic. So let's get to it. Um, I have, well, let's let the Lord lead. First and foremost, <laughs> to address what's probably on your mind, if you have a problem with this topic, is the statement, Black Lives Matters, or Matter, um, is not the organization that is calling itself Black Lives Matter. Okay, just saying the words doesn't make you part of anything. <laughs> so just a little exhortation and encouragement right now. Wherever your opinions are on this topic, just stay with me. Okay, so let's stick it out until the end. I think there'll be some fruit to come that we can all use. Black Lives Matter is self-evidently true. Period. The Church of Jesus needs... I tr Look, when I was this past two weeks and when all this stuff is happening and raging around, and I've had the gamut of emotions and thoughts on this. I've really been through the ringer and in prayer about it because lord what is going on what is the right reaction what should i say or not say what is the proper 
behavior of a Christian in this time for this issue because it's blowing up. It's not just a minor thing that's going to go away. What should we be doing with this, saying with this, loving through this? Hopefully. The phrase is true. A Christian that says the phrase Black Lives Matter should not be an issue, should not be a problem. We should shout it from the rooftops without qualification, without qualification. What does that mean? No ifs, ands, or buts. Yeah, buts, yeah, but, yeah, but. What about, what about, what about? There's no point saying all lives matter. Well, yeah, that's also true. But there's no problem saying a specific type of person matters. Gay lives matter. Yep. Women's lives matter. Yes. Asian lives matter. Yes. You're not betraying or joining up in a, a cult if you say that. No more whatabouts. No more yeah buts. Here's a quick story. Um, I was growing up in New Jersey. And I was a Philadelphia Eagles fan. Still am. And so uh, as a what, 11 or 12 year old, thereabouts, on my wall, like a lot of kids did, and I guess still do, have a poster of your favorite player. Um, for me, that was Randall Cunningham, star quarterback of the Eagles. Loved him, loved him, loved him. So exciting. Love watching him. Fantastic. So I had a poster of him. I I swear to God this is true. It was months or maybe even years of that poster being on the wall until it occurred to me that Randall Cunningham was a black man. I literally did not even know or think to process that information. It, it mattered that little. Now, this does, this is not a pride thing. I'm not saying this, oh yeah, Pastor Chris, you're awesome. The point is, when your heart is right, you don't even see it. However, the nation that we're in, the world that we're in, is full of decay, sin, brokenness, evil, unfairness, unjust, injustice, etc. So even though we may, and I'm only speaking for me, because I came from a family who didn't see past color all the time. My, some of my relatives brought it up quite regularly. So I know we're a mixed bag as the church. So without qualification, we should, every single one of us should be absolutely comfortable and free to say to everyone and anyone who will listen, black lives matter. Jesus loves black people. Yes. Also, without qualification, all Christians of all races are one. One. There's no black church or white church or Korean church, even though you could have fooled me. If you're God looking down at the United States or many other nations, you will see a black church, a white church, Korean church, etc. All Christians of all races are one. Galatians 3 says so. There is neither in Christ Jew or Greek. That means racial differences. There is neither slave nor free. You want to talk about a controversial? How about slavery? Slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are in Christ, or if you are Christ, if you belong to him, Messiah, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. The promise given to Abraham in the book of Genesis. That means you're a Hebrew as far as God is concerned. That's what it's saying. 
you're a Jewish person. Oh, oh my gosh. In the spirit, co-heirs, right? That's the awesome promise. That's the gospel. What a God we serve. There is no distinction, no favoritism, no respecter of persons is our God. But we are all one without qualification. Now, we see, and we have seen, and we are seeing, I haven't checked the news today, but I hope nothing new has happened, of not only protesting, but by the way, I hope as an American, as I, 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 I like the country. I love the country. I'm a patriotic person, believe it or not. Um, a lot of folks think I'm not anymore for some reason. Um, I just love Jesus more than America. And I want the kingdom of God more than anything else. So there's that. But I like the fact that we have First Amendment protections to speak and to worship and to gather and to protest. That's our, that's our right as an American. So I, I think it's a huge mistake for us to begrudge whether you agree with their movement or their statement or not, or anyone's statement to be able to protest about it. You absolutely do. Now, there's more than that. Okay. We, there's violence. There's looting. There's fires. There's all kinds of criminal activity, evil activity. It is. Can't be afraid to say that either. However, and that's lawlessness. And that's the big thing. A lot of folks are quoting scripture about lawlessness. Oh, this is lawlessness on the streets. And therefore, Christians got to be opposed to all this thing. And Black Lives Matter is evil. Can't even say it. That's what folks are coming out with. Now, many or most Christians now are quick to condemn the lawlessness that's occurring. Okay, rightly so. But is that what Jesus is really warning the church in the end times about? Because we hear Matthew 24 bandied about, right? So let's take a look at the scriptures. Open up God's word. What is lawlessness according to Jesus? Is it breaking windows and setting fires and looting? Well, that's clearly breaking the law. The law of man and God, sure. Now look, Matthew 24, 12 to 14. And because lawlessness will abound, be everywhere, the love of many will grow cold. The love of many believers, not many unbelievers. Every time we teach Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, Jesus is talking to believers when these things come about. The love of many Christians will grow cold because they see all this lawlessness. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. You can't separate those two sentences. Endure what? Endure in love. Endure with a unfrozen heart. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. So the gospel of the kingdom and your heart is tied to this end-time lawlessness. Seeing the lawlessness is a temptation of the devil to get you to turn your heart cold. And if your heart is cold, you will not endure to the end. If your heart is cold, you will not preach the gospel of the kingdom. Because you don't care. Now you've turned to hate. Now you've turned to anger. You've turned to frustration. None of this is the spirit. This is the flesh. Matthew 23, he addresses it again. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are like the whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but inside are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Even so, you outwardly appear righteous to men, but inside... You are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Lawlessness inside. 
not their outward appearance or outward activities. Lawlessness is within. Matthew 13, the Son of Man, and same context, the Son of Man will send out his angels. This is on the return of Jesus himself. On that day, the day of the Lord, he will send out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Book of Daniel talks about the righteous shining as the sun. Book of Malachi, okay, we get it. Well, all us Christians want to think we're the righteous and the lawlessness are the evildoers. Again, the context is the Christians. Why did he say to the Pharisees, your lawlessness is within? Why did he say, your love of many will grow cold because of it? What if he's talking about us? Out of his kingdom, all things that offend. Is an unbeliever part of the kingdom of God? I leave it to you. Matthew 7, 21. Finally, and this is a verse that scares a lot of folks, even pastors who or, or leaders who aren't tracking with what we do here at End Time Church. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, the day of the Lord, the day of their judgment, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? First of all, how are you going to do something in the name of Jesus? You can say the Lord, they're calling him Lord, and he is Jesus, right? So they're calling the Lord Jesus. Well, the New Testament says you can't call him the Lord Jesus unless the Holy Spirit is in you. These people are saved. In our understanding of the word. They're deliverance ministers. They're prophets. They're miracle workers. Christians. But I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. In other words, 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness. And sin is lawlessness. So let's focus less on the rioters, looters, and our cities, and more on ourselves. Obviously, this topic has to do with racism. Now, some folks will say, well, even that term is misleading. There are no races of man. Or I understand that. But this is, most people know what it means, so we'll stick with it. A word on racism from God. Are you ready? Numbers 12. Numbers 12. What in the world, brother, are you talking about? I call this section, you want white? I'll give you white. Check it out. While they were at Hazaroth, Miriam and Aaron, his brothers and brother and sister, Moses, criticized Moses because he had married a Cushite woman, or some uh, Bible say Ethiopian. They said, now wait, underline, go back. Because he married a Cushite woman, not because he was annoying, not because he didn't listen to God, not because he gave them a hard time, because he married a certain woman from Cush. Or Ethiopia. They said, has the Lord spoken only through Moses? Hasn't he spoken through us too? But the Lord heard them. Whoops. Now Moses was very humble. More humble than any other person on earth. Some commentaries will say that was actually inserted later. But be that as it may. So immediately the Lord called to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam and said, go out to the tabernacle, all three of you. Can you imagine it's like, if those of you with children, imagine you're, that's it, three kids in the living room now. (laughs) 
So the three of them went to the tabernacle. Then the Lord descended in the pillar of cloud and stood at the entrance of the tabernacle. The Lord Jesus has shown up, folks. He's in the building. He's not just speaking from heaven. He's bodily there. Aaron and Miriam, he called. They stepped forward. The Lord said to them, Now listen to what I say. If there were prophets among you, I, the Lord, would reveal myself in visions. I would speak to them in dreams, but not with my servant Moses. Of all my house, he is the one I trust. I speak to him face to face, clearly, and not in riddles. He sees the Lord as he is. So why were you not afraid to criticize my servant Moses for what, who he married? Okay. The Lord was very angry with them and he departed. So you could say he basically yelled at them and stormed out the door. As the cloud moved from the tabernacle, there stood Miriam. Now her skin was as white as snow from leprosy, as white as snow. From leprosy. When Aaron saw what had happened to her, he cried out to Moses, Oh, my master, please don't punish us for the sin we have so foolishly committed. The sin being what? Yes, he questioned his him as leader, but it was because of who he married. Don't let her be like a stillborn baby already decayed at birth. So Moses cried out to the Lord, Oh God, I beg you, please heal her. But the Lord said to Moses, If her father had done nothing more than spit in her face, wouldn't she be defiled for seven days? So keep her outside the camp for seven days. After that, she may be accepted back. So Miriam was kept outside the camp seven days, and the people waited until she was brought back before they traveled again. And they left Hazaroth and camped in the wilderness of Paran. Here is Cush. Now there's a bunch of maps around and some are larger areas than others, but I thought this was pretty good and clear. When it says he married a Cushite woman or Ethiopian woman, this is where she was from. From the southern border of Egypt. That's Sudan today. Okay, Sudan. Um, Ethiopia, the modern country of Ethiopia is to the south of that. So maybe it was in there or maybe it wasn't. The point is, It was not an Israelite woman. It was not even an Egyptian woman. It was a full-on African woman. Do we understand that? Moses very likely married a black woman. And that is what made Miriam and Aaron, his own family, criticize or question his leadership That's racism, friends. God is calling that out. God is not okay with it. He he wouldn't even heal Miriam right away because of it. See, you I could just imagine you are you people serious? After all that I did for you, after all that I've taught you, after all that I've showed you. This is what you're angry about? It's not like Moses disobeyed me. He's not leading you astray. He's not putting some burden on you like Pharaoh. He married somebody you didn't like the way they looked. Are you kidding me? And don't tell me, don't tell me that that attitude is not still in the church. Because it is. It is. Don't tell me there's no, the Christians wouldn't look at you funny. Your parents wouldn't look at you funny if you came home with a a person of a different race. Some will. Not everyone. Maybe not even most. I don't know. I don't have the polling data, okay? But yes, it's still there. Don't tell me it's gone. And that's, is that a problem? For us, it better be. 
This is a problem to God. Here's where I'm, I guess, not afraid to do stuff that would be offensive. Some of us will likely be offended by this, but here's the facts. I'm trusting everyone listening to this, everyone watching this is against abortion. Clearly. Should be totally with you. Um, Completely. Should be outlawed, should be banished in the Constitution, should be illegal. But before legalized abortion, that was 1973 only, before gay marriage, which was only a couple years ago, believe it or not, America's original sin was racism. If God wanted to judge America before 1973, he had more than enough ammunition because of our racism. We fought a war over it. Yeah, I'm a kind of a history buff. I know the whole Civil War. I know all the arguments. I know the the economic arguments. I know that the everyone uh, doesn't like Lincoln. I get it. I get all. I've seen it all. The fact is it was fought because of racial reasons and to keep slaves. The fact is it never really ended. The fact that we see this attitude in the church not even rooted out. If it's not rooted out of the church, friends, it's all over the culture nationally. It is everywhere. As much as our laws and, and, and governments try to get rid of it, it is there. The Civil War never ended. The shots are not fired anymore. And uh, no one's trying to secede from the Union. Or are they? <laughs> For example, why do I say it never ended? And this, again, this might offend some of my brothers here. I hope it doesn't. But keep, this is a symptom of the national um, guilt. Okay, the non-repentance. Keeping Confederate symbols around confirms our national refusal to repent. It doesn't mean everyone who has a Confederate flag is a racist and wants to harm black people or have slaves. But it is a symbol that's saying we don't, we're not sorry. We want to keep this around. It's like, a, gosh, it's like the, the Old Testament come to life. You keep your Asherah poles. You keep your Baal temples. You keep your items uh, offered to, you know, sacrifice to yada yada. Even Jericho, it came down, mighty miracle. Hey, everyone's on the same page, eh, except for the one guy who kept the doodad in his tent, right? He refused to repent, refused to give it up. We refused to give it up. So we're paying the price. The church must be above this. We must be separated from this. We must be better than this. We must shine the light into this growing darkness, but the right way. The right way. What's the right way? So many of us are fighting this in the flesh right now. And maybe I'm talking to you. Our fight is not to criticize others whether it be individual others, pick your favorite TV personality or politician or rioter in the streets. This is not right to fight them. Or organizations like Black Lives Matter. Whatever you think that means, whatever you think it stands for, whatever you think, whoever you think is funding it, whatever satanic thing you think is going on, that's not their other humans. Okay? It is not right to criticize them. That's not our fight for their sins. Don't criticize another man for his sins. That's not the role of the church. It's to call people to repentance, yes. But with the gospel, with Jesus, with the cross, we're, we are to submit. We're not judges laying judgment on who's sinning worse and who's behind what and who's really evil and who's going to take away our rights and this and that. What does that have to do with Jesus? Nothing. Our 
our fight, our job, our role, our duty as soldiers of Jesus is to submit to him, submit to him, his leadership, and to crucify our own flesh. So many of us, including yours truly, forget this fact all the time. Crucify your flesh. Wow, Jesus went to the cross for me. I'm good to go. That's not what Paul teaches. That's not what Jesus said to do. He said, pick up your cross. Paul said, I die daily. Put that thing up there. I beat my body and make it my slave. You want to talk about slavery? Make your own body your slave. So that after preaching to others, I won't become disqualified. That's what Paul was worried about. This is the way to fight. We need to declare war. Because war is upon us. War is upon us. War for your soul is on. doesn't matter if you're saved. You can slip. You can fall. You can be one of those ones who is in the kingdom and calls Jesus Lord and does miracles, and yet he doesn't know you. You can practice lawlessness within you. You can hold on to sin. You can hold on to your flesh. You can hold on to these things. You're in danger, friend. We are in danger when we do that. Severe danger. We are getting close to the end of the age. This is enough is enough. He told us exactly what we have to do. There is nothing lacking, nothing lacking in the word of God. The spirit of God is completely willing, ready, and able to help you in this war. But you must declare it for yourself in yourself, and your home. How do we fight? Two passages to close. Galatians 5, number 1. For listen, listen, listen to the Apostle Paul. For you were called to freedom, my brothers. But do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. But through love, serve one another. Just take that one verse and apply it to the protests in the streets of America. What, how are you using your freedom, American believer? Verse 14, for the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. But I say walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit. And the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. They are opposed to each other. You cannot, insertion, manti version, you cannot make nice and have a detente or a peace treaty between your flesh and your spirit. One will die. That's when it ends. That's victory. Not detente, okay? Not, not calling it off and, oh, I've had enough of this. Can't we just, can't we all just get along flesh and spirit? No, we can't. Because the flesh one second will say, oh, cower in the corner. Oh, don't beat me up. Oh, I'm so weak. Oh, you need, oh, I just want to sleep. I just want to eat. I just want to blah, blah, blah. Next minute tries to kill the spirit. This is war. They are opposed to each other to keep you. Why why are they opposed? To keep you from doing the things you want to do. As As a saved Christian person, as one who obeys, hopefully, the Holy Spirit, you want to do what he wants. You want to do the spiritual right thing. But the flesh says, no, 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 no. I win. You're still here. I'm in charge. That's the war. But if you are led by the Spirit, verse 18... 
If you are led by the Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are not under the law. In fact, you're completely free. That's what he started off saying. You're free, my brothers, if you're in the Spirit. Now, everyone knows the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians 5, but what about the fruits of the flesh? Work of the flesh is, is evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, idolatry. Does that mean you have to have a little statue of some ancient god in your bedroom and bow to it and say prayers to it to have an idol? Uh, No. (laughs) No. Politics, idol. Social media, idol. Your own righteousness, idol. You think you're better than the next guy, idol. For or against president whomever, idol. Our own ministries could be idols. Take heed that you stand lest you fall. Sorcery. Let's get back into it. Sorcery. Sorcery. Drug use. Enmity. Strife. Jealousy. Strife and enmity. Don't think this is only the bad guys, quote unquote, engaging in strife and jealousy. Or uh, strife and enmity. Excuse me. Every time you criticize, you're engaging in it. Jealousy, there's jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, rivalries. The teams are lining up. Here's the Republicans and the Democrats going at it again. Conservatives and liberals. Didn't Jesus warn us about this stuff? You're, look, guys, if you get sucked into this, I don't care if you think you're a Christian or not. If you're sucked into these these games, you're either a Pharisee or a Sadducee. You know the word up and down, but you have no heart. That's a Pharisee. Your heart's cold. Or a Sadducee, you're so liberal, you don't know what the word says. You just make stuff up. You believe stuff that's not even in there, like there's no resurrection. These are for our instruction upon whom the end of the ages has come. Jealousy, fits of anger, rivalry, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, so Paul's had to repeat himself to the same people. I warned you before that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Who's he talking to? The church of the Galatians. Not the unbelievers of the Galatians, not the seekers, the believers. You who do such things, you believers, you want to not inherit the kingdom? You think you're in no matter what? Think you're good to go? Be in the flesh. See what happens. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self Control. Oh, God, work on me, Lord Jesus. Self-control. Against such things, there is no law. That's why you're free. That's why you have freedom. You want your freedom? Live in the Spirit. Do love, do joy, peace, patience, etc., etc. Self-control at all times. Then you're free. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. He's always moving. you got to go. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Oh, Lord, help us. God, save us in America. We've become so conceited, provoking one another. And finally, 1 Timothy 6. You, O man of God, be exhorted, you young pastor, you Timothy. Flee these things of evil and the flesh. Flee these things and pursue. What do you go after instead of the old ways and the flesh? Pursue righteousness, 
godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Grab it. To which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. You've told, keep telling it. Confess that confession. Your life is eternal in the Son of God. I urge you in the sight of God who gives life, life to all things. And before Christ Jesus, who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate, he himself gave that confession. You do the same. That you keep this commandment without spot. That means perfect. Keep it to the letter. Blameless until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ's appearing. This isn't an end times issue. Yes, it is. He's going to appear one day. And some of us will be alive. How will he find us? How will he find us? Why is it? Why is it that Why is it the bride in the book of Revelation has to make herself ready? Why isn't she just ready automatically? Why why isn't it just happen? There's some purification, friends. We've got to go through it. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be fun. Putting down the flesh is not a walk in the park. If it was, it wouldn't be in the Bible. Right? You get you believed. You get saved. You get the spirit. Boom. Done. Nothing else to worry about. You're fine. <laughs> it's not the testimony of the scriptures. It's not the testimony of the New Testament or the Old Testament. God is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever, the Lord Jesus is the same. So, please, this subject, just to go back to what we are saying in the beginning, do not be afraid. Please, don't be afraid to say Black Lives Matter because they do. And this is the great controversy of, if you're in America, and even if you're not, if you're in Europe, it's the same kind of thing, but it's, it's a uniquely American wound. It's a wound that has been spread open. It's never healed. It's never healed. This latest uh, uprising, this latest stirring inside, the spiritual stirring around our nation right now, yeah, the enemy is in it, but so is God. God's in it. God is stirring this up. God is sticking that finger in the wound. And if you don't get over this, I'm going to open it right up. And we haven't. He can judge us alone. Forget abo- He'll forget it, but aside from all that, he doesn't need the sin of abortion, the sin of gay marriage or homosexuality or, or at all. He can judge us on our racism since we found out the country. It's true. And we can be destroyed tomorrow for it. Look what he did to Moses' own sister. I don't think he will do it to us. All right, praise God. Father, seal this. Seal this with your Holy Spirit. Seal our minds around the truth of your word and the reliability of your word, the reliability of your spirit. You are right here. You are right next to us. You are witnessing to us right now. You're convicting our hearts right now. You're convicting my heart right now. Thank you for the testimony of your apostles, the testimony of your prophets. We testify about you, Lord Jesus, the perfect Son of God, the one who knew what to do, who teaches us how to fight, teaches us how to war, and to have victory over our flesh. You showed it. You modeled it. You can do it. You did do it. And you will teach us if we're willing. Lord, I pray that we renew our commitment to be under your leadership and have no areas unturned over, that you would light every dark corner of our souls, anything that might be held on to, anything that we don't even realize, Father. Bring it to the surface so we can be destroyed in the light. We acknowledge that we need you. None of this happens without you. 
Preserve your people, those who are willing. Bless them mightily right now. Bring us into your presence, into your fullness, and seal this message in us, that we may walk in it, not run away from it, but embrace it and bring your gospel to these lost, hurting people. Lord, most of the people on the streets of America don't know you. They would have peace. Yes, the desire for justice is real, and we should not criticize that. We love you. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> amen, amen. Pastor Jake is, uh, I'm sure, around somewhere. <laughs> he is, so bless God. Uh, if if you all are available, we are going to do a after party. There's Jake. Boom. Look at that. That's a spiritual movement right there. I didn't know he was coming. Uh, so praise God. I should probably put these back in so I can hear him. Um, we're going to do an after party. If you all are willing, we're going to hit a button and open up a live chat video. And go, go to town. How long did it last last week, Jake? I don't even know. <laughs> if if I, I say that, it's going to scare everybody from coming today. Okay, never mind. It's as long as it needs to be. <laughs> yeah, it went into overtime last week. <laughs> there you go. Well, praise God, man. So, yeah, uh, if you would, um, I don't know. I, I, how, how are you feeling about this? Uh, are you feeling a, a tension in, in, the, in, the, in your locality where i mean look god planted us in places for reasons right he, he put us in our nation in our state even our town right like x says for a purpose um are you feeling this unease where you are as as i am because we're in different parts of the country so it could uh, be different yeah no, no 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 i mean yes i think everywhere probably to a certain extent here in the states i would say much less where i'm at uh but you know one you know there have been uh actually nearby in Fayetteville uh where I'm at there's some actually some very uh positive protests that made the news for being positive so uh that's a little bit of what we've seen praise god for that yep yep cuz it's i mean really I've, it's very tense it's on a, a knife's edge um where we're at where it's very just very uneasy it's very uneasy. Yeah. Kind of like being on the Temple Mount, honestly. Uh. Yeah, it, what's, what's really crazy, I think, for probably for all of us, it it blows me away to like just go through my Facebook feed on you know on phone or the computer, and you, you see people who are right in the mix. Uh, you see people who uh, you know have property loss. You see people that are greatly hurt. You see people that are greatly adamant, and then you see somebody having a birthday party. <laughs> you see somebody <laughs> on vacation. You know, I mean, and that's it's so extreme. I mean, it's these things are happening, and they're they're very deep in others' lives, and then in some lives, you know, it's not not caring. It's just not on the radar. It's not affecting them, and uh, yeah. I, I think that's a lesson into the end times, and and to as we come into, you know difficult times is that that factor of uh you know all getting on the same page being awake uh for that right right yep and that's i I really just you know he's trying to put us together on the team whether whether we're ready for it or not right we're teammates we're family um gotta gotta get on the gotta get it with the program or <laughs> he's going to just go. He's going to move. Hey guys, I got stuff to do. So you know, catch up. Um, but I'm, I'm going to be about, uh, you know, doing my work here. So either partner with yeah. me or, or get out of the way. You're not, I don't want to break from where you, you took us, uh, tonight. Uh, but it was so crazy. I ended my low, you know, all the time here, we're telling folks to be prepared for what's coming and, uh, you know, to be awake, to, you know, understand to stand firm and those things. So with my, my local church Sunday, I closed the service and we're reading, working through Pilgrim's Progress. And we're actually at a scene where they're warned uh, that in the next, a, next town that they go into, one will, at least one will lose their life. And so we read that, you know, encouraging uh, news there and uh, ended the service to say, you know, 
who knows uh, what's going to happen. I, I think one thing that I've tried to point out uh, and, and realize, hey, if you were here in the 60s, 70s, uh, riots and protests, does that happen then? I mean, we're very trying as well. Uh, and this could be just that, or it could be much more. Uh, but I think very possibly when we look out, we see the news, we see what's going on. I mean, it's, it's almost like, and I, I told you this earlier today, it's almost like the United States has unraveled. I mean, it's not that it could, it would, you know, uh, but that doesn't mean it has to stay that way. And I couldn't believe, you know, to mm-hmm. close the service and say, Hey guys, I just want to just warn you, give you a pastoral warning. Uh, that we, we have, it is, you know, at any time, uh, we could see something drastically change that drastically affects our lives and to stand firm, uh, in that. Uh, and so I don't want to break away from you. You're, you're calling us to repentance and to heart. Uh, but I, I think that's something that we need to realize doesn't have to be, you know, there, and, and that's what's so wild in different parts of the country. We all face different things. Uh, but it's, it would not take much, uh, for something to drastically change. Not, a, not at all. I mean, there, and there's more, multiple factors. It's like the ancient Israel too. I mean, you've got enemies on every side just waiting yeah. for it to stumble. And, uh, they might say, okay, guys, time to go. We, this is our opportunity. This is our window. They're weak. They're, they're preoccupied with stuff at home. Time for our move. Um, and that, who knows what shape that'll take, you know? So, I mean, God has got the playbook open, like in the football terminology, right? It's like, it's like second and three, like anything's possible. Um, whatever he chooses to put on us, we can, it's susceptible. We're susceptible now. And so, you know, obviously as, you know, pastoral way, we want to be as a church to get ourselves right and in the right frame of mind to address and go into the fire, right? Like a Marine, like Pastor Anderson would do is you see the fire, you run into it because we're equipped, we're protected, you know, we're the Lord's in it. We're there. That's how, you know, we really got to cultivate that. Uh, but yeah, you're right, man. I mean, any, at any moment here, it could be different. And a lot of ways it's, it's different than six months ago. Uh, it's definitely different than six months ago. Yeah, uh, gosh. But I just think a lot of things at our work, I mean, we have to understand there are organizations within our, our nation uh, seeking to drastically change it. And they're having their way, and you know, I don't. I think we should be surprised at anything. I think maybe, I, th- I think uh, you know, I think we realize this year anything can change at any time. Yeah, that's true. We got to be ready to dance around, right? Okay, Lord, we're two today. We're two right now. We're two right now. That's what we need. Anyway, praise God. Uh, thank you all for watching. I know we've had a uh, different kind of audience than usual, probably. Uh, going out to different venues and, and avenues here tonight. So uh, I pray that uh, the Lord worked in you and that you would search your own heart uh, of things you need to repent for, because we all got it, guys. Really, we do. And we've got to be totally and one million percent with the Spirit on this as we go forward, because there's no other way to do it. Uh, so contact us if you need anything. Uh, until next week, we will be right back here, same time, same channel, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, End Time Church. Uh, Jake, you want to pray us on out of here, and then we'll meet each other over in the after party, whoever wants to join. Link is hey, out there. Be everywhere. Hmm? Hey, you close the prayer. I played, prayed oh. twice tonight. Not that I yeah. don't like to pray, yeah, but I don't want to just do it out of habit. You yeah, close okay, man. Tonight. You got it. You got it. No problem. Uh, Father, we love you. I thank you for my family. I thank you for Jake and Chris and for everyone who's uh, seen it in their heart to help to move this thing forward. And uh, we're just so honored to be able to do this with you. And thank you for all these brothers and sisters throughout the nations who are coming together, who are hearing your voice, who are, who are being responsive, who want to say, yes, Lord, send me. I'm, I'm willing to cleanse my heart. Use me. Use me for the gospel. Uh, let's get this great commission done. Uh, let's, Lord, we welcome you back to the earth. That's what we want. We say Maranatha uh, as, we, as we see these things, this upheaval, these things that are not fun to, to go through. We know there's a purpose in it. We know your plan is perfect. And you're in everything that we're seeing. And if we can see you in it, we can have peace and all those fruits of the spirit that you want us to display. So let us do that today and going forward. So thank you for being you, for never changing in Jesus' name. Amen. Till next time, friends.